spoke from the head of the Department of Internal Medicine of St. Louis University, St. University, Sacred uh, Medi Heart Medical Center, Dr. Dave Anthony E. Padilla. Please give him a round of applause. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see the different uh, trainees from different hospitals not competing today, but collaborating. So as we all know, the Bangamot syndrome is quite in the eastern part of Asia. And having part of our pediatric consultants, it was the first documented Bangamot was a pediatric gen. So our scientists, headed by Dr. Basha, are here today to talk about um, the Bangamut program, which should be um, involving the entire country. So we need all your help to screen and to enroll our patients. So with this, uh, I'd like to ask RMC to introduce our speaker today. Thank you, Dr. Padilla, for the warm welcome. So for the discussion of the background of the Philippine Bangamut program, it's an honor to introduce you to the head of electrophysiology section of both UPPJH or uh, Philippine General Hospital and St. Luke's Medical Center Global City. And of course, the program and program to leader of the Philippine Bangamut program, please give her a round of applause to resolve your passion. Thank you, Maria. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, I'd like to greet Dr. P, of course, Dr. Padilla, Dr. Goa, Dr. Bakani, Dr. Gomez. Uh, did I miss any of the consultants? And then I, I hear that the four hospitals are represented here in the trainees from SLU, Notre, ICE, and BJ. So, was mentioned, this uh, Philippine Bangamut program is a nationwide program. It is funded by the Philippine Center for Health Research Development, which is an agency of the uh, DOST, the Department of Science and Technology. It took us maybe 15 years to come to this point because it started with researches conducted initially on the epidemiology of Bangungut and Brugada. I will be showing a YouTube video that will give the background of both Bangungut and Brugada. And initially, we we piggyback the research on the NHES. Have you heard of the NHES? It's the National Nutrition Health Survey back in 2003. Because every five years, the FNRI conducts a nationwide survey on health and nutrition. And at that time, there was a clinical arm headed by the Department of Health. And in that survey, we were able to conduct, a, administer a questionnaire to be able to measure the incidence of sudden unexplained death syndrome. So randomly across the country, households were selected and the questionnaire was administered. And this allowed us to measure the incidence of Bangungut at 43 per 100,000. And that's a very accurate figure because randomized skill sampling. And then at the same time, we did ECGs on the people in those households that were randomly selected. And from this uh, ECGs, we were able to measure the incidence of the Brugada ECG pattern, which was surprisingly quite common. Two per thousand, yung type 1 pattern. So that's why those of you that do pre-operative clearance, those of you that do pre-employment clearance, you will occasionally get referrals for the Brugada ECG pattern. Fortunately, most of them are asymptomatic. And that's a totally different ballgame compared to the symptomatic ones, those that already have syncope, pre-syncope, seizure, or worse, sudden unexplained death. The uh, asymptomatic, it would seem, have a low cardiac event rate. And then later on, we did uh, an autopsy case control series where we compared 20 Bangungut victims' autopsies 
with 20 age and gender match controls. And it showed that there is no significant difference in the autopsies of the Bagumun group compared to controls. And one of the very important significance of last study I am citing is that uh, it ruled out pancreatitis. In, in the whole world, the Philippines is one country where pancreatitis is still held by a lot of people to be the cause of bangungot. And the origin of that belief is the survey by Munger and Luton, published initially in the 1980s, where they did a review of death certificates of PNP uh, Western Philippine District, Manila, uh, autopsies. Uh, what happened then was whenever the, patholo the forensic pathologist could not identify the cause of death, and the presentation is bangungot, he would look at the pancreas and conclude that the pancreas appeared inflamed and pinkish. And uh, it sort of became a tradition, so to speak, but one which uh, carried on the myth of pancreatitis being the cause of bangungot, and which we had already have ruled out. Now, in the West, uh, in the 1990s, there were three Spanish cardiologists. I know not all of them are cardiologists, but they're brothers by the name of Brugada, Pedro, Ramon, and Jose. And they found that uh, so the individuals that presented with bangungot like phenotype had a peculiar ECG pattern, which will be shown later. And it was called Brugada syndrome. And this Brugada syndrome was uh, found to be familial in one-third of cases. So worldwide, whenever there is a sudden unexplained death syndrome, they will do an ECG uh, on the relatives, first-degree relatives of this uh, proband because they were trying to identify if the relatives are at risk for bangungot. On the other hand, you don't have to wait until some, someone dies in the family because you can already do an ECG in those that have warning symptoms of syncope, seizure, unexplained accidents. And if they happen to have the ECG pattern, then they are diagnosed to have Brugada syndrome, for which, based on the treatment guidelines, the life-saving treatment is an ICD implantation, implantable cardioverter defibrillator, because what that does is it will automatically detect the ventricular fibrillation uh, automatically deliver either cardioversion or defibrillation depending on the arrhythmia that is documented. Okay, so now I will share. Uh, oops. May I have a privilege to share? I thank the esteemed organizing committee for this opportunity to speak uh, on Brugada syndrome, I have no disclosures to make. This discussion is delivered in the context of a growing need to understand sudden unexplained death syndrome, which is a condition with higher prevalence in Asia. Sudden unexplained death syndrome is death which occurs within an hour of the onset of symptoms in an otherwise healthy individual. It is also referred to colloquially as bangungot, Laitai and Bokuri in our countries. When it occurs in an infant, it is referred to as SUDI or sudden unexplained death in an infant. Brugada syndrome is a specific subset of SUDS or SUDS. And this syndrome was first described in the 1990s by three uh, Spanish brothers, namely Pedro, Ramon, and Joseph Brugada. It is characterized by a phenotype of SUDS, or Sudden Unexplained Death, along with uh, documented ventricular fibrillation or syncope, blackouts, associated with a specific ECG pattern. The ECG pattern is characterized by a J-point and cove type of ST elevation in leads V1 and V2 of the ECG. And the phenotype, as you can probably guess, resembles SUDS or bangungot.
it has been described from different parts of the world. Our data have been included in this publication by uh, Mrs. Sawa on the prevalence of the Brugada uh, syndrome in the world. Overall, type 1 and type 2 pattern are the more common patterns in the Philippines with 2.23% uh, showing the type 2 pattern and 0.18% showing the type 1 pattern. Uh, just to backtrack a little bit, the type 1 pattern is the one with a J-point and convex type or shoulder shoulder morphology of ST elevation, whereas the type 2 pattern has the J-point and the saddle shape of ST elevation. Uh, by definition, it is only the type 1 ECG pattern, which is diagnostic of Brugada syndrome. Now, this uh, inverted pyramid shows the risk in terms of Brugada syndrome presentation intuitively those that have suffered uh, sudden unexplained death or ventricular fibrillation are at highest risk this is followed in uh, darker orange by those with uh, syncope or blackouts or even pre-syncope cardiac seizures and the like and then uh, fortunately those that are asymptomatic and that would probably account for a majority of those with the ECG pattern are at low risk and uh, do not warrant at this moment treatment now, in the Philippines, the annualized incidence of uh, sudden unexplained death syndrome based on our data is 43 per 100,000, shown in the green bars, the green bar rather. This is comparable to the 37 per 100,000 in Japan and the 41 in China and 38 per 100,000 in Thailand. But you will notice that uh, overall, the incidence in Asia is higher compared to those uh, in the Western countries. Now, Brugada syndrome is classified under channelopathies, signifying an abnormality in a cardiac ion channel. This leads to an arrhythmia, commonly ventricular fibrillation. Ho however, only 20% of Brugada syndrome can be attributed to a single gene the SCN5A. In the majority of, uh, or the 80%, it's either from a polymorphism or sporadic, meaning uh, negative during genetic analysis. And uh, that single gene that has been accepted as being causal in Brugada syndrome is called the SCN5A gene, which encodes the fast sodium channel responsible for phase zero phase zero of the, or the depolarization phase of the action potential. Now, the loss of function in the SCN5A is more pronounced in the epicardium. And so, uh, because of this premature termination of depolarization, there is the so-called loss of the spike. The spike is actually from the phase zero and dome, which is the repolarization phase more prominent in the epicardium but not in the endocardium of the right ventricular outflow tract. Now, it is this uh, difference in the membrane potential between epicardium, the one with the loss of spike and dome, and the endocardium, which appears normal, that causes what we call a dispersion of repolarization and phase 2 re-entry, leading to ventricular fibrillation. Now, we know from physics that when there is a difference in membrane potential, current uh, ensues. And it is this current of injury that is manifest on the electrocardiogram, which we have uh, previously defined as the Brugada ECG pattern. Now, the graph here shows that the SEN5A mutation is, has been documented in a larger proportion of uh, Brugada syndrome from Western countries, whereas in, in Asia, it accounts for a mere 10%. And it is for this reason that there, uh, there is some work to try to determine whether they are uh, phenotypically and genotypically identical or not. Now, that being said, aside from the SCN5A gene, other genes have been forwarded as possibly linked to Brugada syndrome, but at the moment have not yet been accepted as being causal for Brugada syndrome. And uh, one will notice that the other genes are also the same genes that are included in uh, the screening for other arrhythmic syndromes, such as long QT syndrome, 
some of the genes are genes responsible for cardiomyopathy, such as uh, arrhythmogenic RV cardiomyopathy, uh, catecholaminergic polymorphic VT, and the like. Now, some groups are convinced, in particular those working from Thailand, that Brugada syndrome and Asian SUDs are phenotypically and genotypically the same. Uh, the often cited debut study, randomizing Thai patients uh, between ICD and beta blockers, has shown that uh, ICD uniformly successfully treated ventricular fib fibrillation in Thai SUDs patients and saved lives. However, uh, there are a lot of gaps that remain. In particular, when comparing Brugada and SUDs, as shown in the previous graph, uh, SCN5A has been documented more in Brugada and less in Asian SUDs. And then the Thai group has found fibrosis in the epicardial uh, wall of the right ventricular outflow tract in Brugada patients, whereas the groups that have been working on Asian SUDs have documented some patients with arrhythmogenic RV dysplasia or RV cardiomyopathy. Uh, for both, SCN5A remains the only proven uh, gene that may cause Brugada or Asian SUDS, but a lot of gaps remain. What is clear, however, is that at the very least, there is a great overlap between Brugada syndrome and Asian SUDS, and that both conditions are not largely monogenic, but may be driven by genetic polymorphisms as documented in genome-wide associ associ association studies conducted by Bazina et al. in uh, large populations of patients. Now, uh, we've repeatedly mentioned SCN5A has been documented in 20% of Brugada syndrome cases. In the genome-wide associ association studies have revealed polymorphisms in regions near the SCN5A and the HE2 regions. Now, the diagnosis of Brugada requires the presence of the phenotype. Uh, so to reiterate, either resuscitated sudden death, ventricular fibrillation, syncope, pre-syncope, or seizure, along with a spontaneous or provoked ECG pattern with a J-point and ST elevation, T-wave inversion. And the provocation is performed using a sodium channel blocker such as adjmaline, plecainide, or procaine amide. Uh, and with that provocation, the normal baseline may be converted into a type 1 pattern, which is necessary to allow diagnosis of Brugada syndrome. Genetic testing at the moment has a limited role in the clinics, and EP study has a class 2B recommendation but remains controversial. Genetic testing uh, in some clinics may be used and has a particularly strong role if the proband is positive for a pathogenic or likely pathogenic gene. The cornerstone of therapy in Brugada syndrome is implantation of the ICD or implantable cardioperatory defibrillator which has been shown to save lives and to reverse sudden cardiac death. There is limited role at the moment for catheter ablation. And quinidine, which ironically is a sodium channel blocker, has some role uh, in the adjunctive treatment of Brugada syndrome patients. The guidelines for ICD implantation are very similar between adults and pediatri uh, pediatric patients with Brugada syndrome. So, obviously, those that have suffered sudden unexplained death or ventricular fibrillation are a class 1 recommend recommendation. And uh, this is with a level of evidence B. Those with syncope and either a spontaneous or provoked type 1 pattern are a class 2A recommendation for ICD, level of evidence B. And those that have syncope presumed to be from ventricular arrhythmias with a type 1 pattern, uh, but only during provocative uh, maneuvers or a class 2B level of recommendation C. ICD implantation is not indicated in asymptomatic Brugada syndrome patients in the absence of risk factors. 
Now, there are limited data on Brugada syndrome in children. Uh, this is the only uh, study I found. The single center study enrolled children less than 12 years of age. 30% of cases had spontaneous uh, ECG patterns, whereas 70% were either associated with fever or were drug-induced. Majority of this uh, single-center study were Caucasians. Only one had a documented chromosomal abnormality, and the only ECG uh, finding significantly associated with Brugada syndrome was first-degree AV block. Catheter ablation of areas of slow conduction surrounding areas of fibrosis in the epicardial right ventricular outflow tract has been forwarded by the Thai group as an adjunctive therapy for Brugada syndrome. This is, uh, we say adjunctive because this is in addition to ICD therapy. A randomized trial is currently ongoing to test the hypothesis that this may be used as first time therapy. Now, uh, multi, a multidisciplinary team as shown here. So you need not just clinicians, you also need uh, coordinators, you need psychologists, you need geneticists who can, who can provide uh, counseling uh, as necessary to uh, successfully manage Brugada syndrome patients. And that in addition to research and gathering data to further our knowledge on, on this. And uh, actually, it is for this reason that the Philippine Bangungut Program has been set up to establish a multi-agency network that will facilitate diagnosis, care, and research on SUDS and Brugada syndrome. The research arm is divided into the Bangungut and Brugada projects, which target to enroll probands and their parents in a trios design who will undergo genetic analysis, results of which will be carefully adjudicated by a multidisciplinary team. Genetic counseling will be provided as well from the SUDS clinic to be set up at the Philippine General Hospital together with a path towards possible ICD implantation. The projects will run for two years. So in summary, Brugada syndrome and SUDS are complex and its management multi-layered. Managing patients well uh, requires understanding of the science, but also appreciating the art required to support our patients. And a team or even a network approach should allow achieving of these goals. I'd like to end with this quote. Sometimes you will never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. And it is on this note that I would like to espouse a proactive management of Brugada syndrome and sudden unexplained death syndrome. Thank you once again and have a good day. Thank you. So at this point, I'd like to introduce the, the members of the team. We have uh, Dr. Chris Dimaunan. She's our science research specialist. And then we have Dr. Sandy. She's our project head of the Bangumut, uh, Philippine Bangumut Project. Dr. Lou Francisco, project head of the Philippine Brigada Project. And you've met Marielle Bautista, Marielle Selim Bautista, our research assistant. But uh, aside from the study yeah. people, we also have the investigators. You probably know some of them. So as you can see, it's a multi-agency network. We have uh, Dr. Ses Lim, the second from the left. She's the clinical investigator for the Bangungut Arm. She's a very famous uh, forensic pathologist. Dr. Joseph Palmero is from the Philippine National Police Crime Laboratory. And then uh, Dr. El Eb Ebner Bon Maceda from the National Institute of Health. And then Perky Maramara, she's our EP fellow at the Philippine General Hospital. Eva Marie Cotionco de La Paz is a famous geneticist who works with the NIH, but also with the Philippine Genome Center. And she helped us craft, uh, she and her team helped us craft the genetics uh, part of the methodology 
Dr. Michael Joseph Abayani, second from left, is the lead investigator from the Philippine Heart Center. In the center, that's Dr. Beverly Lorraine Ho, Assistant Secretary for Health from the Department of Health. And then Dr. Spola Cheng and, and uh, Paul, Ton, uh, Paul Anthony Allen are clinical research fellows at the Philippine General Hospital. So it's a very broad multidisciplinary team. And then you've met our study personnel. Now, uh, additional fun facts, because you've heard the lecture from the video shown earlier. Did you know that SUDS was first developed or first described in the Philippines worldwide? In the world literature, the first uh, description came from the Philippines by Paz Mendoza Guazon. There's a street named after her. Yung dating Otis is now called Paz Mendoza Guazon. And uh, she's the first Filipino to receive a high school diploma, the first woman to graduate from the UP College of Medicine, first Filipina professor in UP, first Filipina winner of the Zobel Prize, and the first person in the world to quote-unquote discover Pagungot. And then I, I told you about this earlier, the study that ruled out pancreatitis because we compared the autopsies, wala naman palang pancreatitis. It's more really normal autopsies. So that in the Western world, ang kasunod ng normal autopsy in SUDS is what we call molecular autopsy. That means they will undergo genetic analysis to find out a possible channelopathy as the cause of death. And then you've seen this, Brugada syndrome. I, I flashed it one more time so it will uh, hopefully stay in your uh, memory. Yeah. So if V1 and V2 are the key leads with ST and J-point elevation, convex pattern, it looks like uh, an MI, an anteroceptal acute MI. But of course, it's a diagnosis by exclusion. You don't have any structural heart disease. And as mentioned earlier, it can present with syncope, pre-syncope, seizure, and an ECG pattern that is present in 0.2% of Filipinos. Ayan, maraming significance yung study, but just to highlight, aside from being the first in the Philippines, and it will contribute to worldwide, worldwide literature, it will also allow development of test kits for genetic screening, which later on hopefully will be commercially available to allow us to screen at a cheaper price. Uh, that's called targeted screening. And then uh, it will also allow formation of a multi-agency network so that in the future when someone presents with sudden death, there's already a workflow in place among the different government agencies. It will allow development of clinical practice guidelines in cooperation with DOH and Philippine Heart Association. And hopefully in the future also pave the way for a special benefit program for ICT implantation because right now, it's largely out of pocket. And as you know, it can be costly. So the program is different from the projects because the program is broader. It's not just research. It's really to systematize diagnosis and management of SUDS. Whereas the projects are the research arms. And there are two arms, the Bangungut and the Brugada project projects, which both aim to identify the pattern of inheritance and the genes associated with the two conditions. The specific objectives are shown. Mainly, we, it's a genetic study, so we want to identify the mutations, adjudicate the pathogenicity, because not all mutations are necessarily pathogenic. Create a panel of genes to be used for targeted screening and identify high-risk mutations. These are the object, uh, the expected output. So aside from publication, the targeted screening, setting up of the SUDS clinic and the multi-agency network, development of CPGs, and standardization of molecular autopsy. Social impact, we hope to further public education and empower families so they know what to do and return to the workforce of breadwinners. Because if they are diagnosed early enough and there is no neurologic deficit, they can return to the workforce. Methods, the recruitment strategies will be by colleagues uh, later on. Pedigree construction will be done. For the genetic analysis, what will be required is 10 ml of blood. And then this is the workflow that will be discussed by Dr. Lu later on. 
the genetic study workflow is uh, consists of sample preparation, library preparation, sequencing, and the bioinformatics pipeline. Now, for sequencing, there are two types of sequencing. Phase 1, which is whole exome sequencing, and phase 2, which is targeted sequencing. Now, there's a different workflow for the variant coding pipeline. Uh, there will be certain tools used to analyze which of the genetic mutations are sig significant or not. And these are well benchmarked uh, tools. All uh, new generation sequencing analysis steps will be done in a high performance computing system at the Philippine Genome Center. So it's quite complex, but there are three phases of the bioinformatics pipeline. Phase one is variant discovery, phase two is variant calling, and phase three is the statistical analysis. So I'll end here because I want to give my colleagues a chance to give more details on the recruitment strategy. So I'll call Marielle to introduce the next speaker. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Giselle. Now that we know the school of the Philippine Government Program, let's talk about the recruitment for the follow work of the participants. Thank everyone that there will be a question and answer portion, so please just your questions for that. Any questions will be entertained and answered daily. So let's start with the first arm, the Philippine Bangunga Bangu Program, to be presented by the Project Development Officer of the said arm, Dr. Sandy A. Magalito. Please keep your mouth the floor. Um, so good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Magalito from GH, uh, Department of Laboratories. So I would like to thank everyone for uh, for coming here today and lending your ears so that uh, we can discuss this exciting study. So I will be explaining uh, the, the recruitment workflow for the Bangungot arm or the Bangungot study. So first, uh, let's start with the personal involved. Um, the referrals will be coming from uh, the emergency room officers uh, and the PNP crime lab and the morticians. So there. I will be the PDO. Uh, the pathologist who will be guiding me would be Dr. Maria Cecilia Lim and jo uh, Dr. Joseph Palmero. And our research assistant will be uh, Ms. Bautista. So for this one, uh, once there's a uh, referrals First off, uh, there will be an EROD or ER officer that will be uh, receiving a body at the ER, and, uh, probably dead on arrival. So after that, um, the EROD would probably the EROD would uh, discuss or assess the deceased if if the patient or the deceased. Uh, is included or might be included in our study. So we will be sending a checklist for this one. So uh, this is the checklist. So the deceased must be 19 to 60 years old with no known disease or apparently healthy. Then uh, for this one, the deceased should uh, must have suffered from sudden cardiac death. Uh, he or she must die while asleep. He or she must die within an hour of the onset of symptoms, may it be syncope, pre-syncope, or seizure. Then the patient or the deceased must have uh, died within 24 hours from the last time that the subject was seen well or if the death was unwitnessed. So, there. so what is important here is that both uh, biologic parents must be available and willing and is willing to, be, to participate in the study. So this is crucial. And uh, for this one, there's uh, however, we'll be conducting uh, we will be conducting drug tests prior to the autopsy. So uh, this we can uh, we can let go of this probably. Thank you. 
For, uh, for the enrollment so there. After that, if they express their willingness to be enrolled to a study, I will proceed on site. Then do the pre test counseling and acquire consent for the study. Uh, the body is pathology training institute, PNP trial lab, or in the funeral parlor. Then under the supervision of the and the doctor will be performing he or she can have a negative during the time of during the time of OC uh during the lot of physiologic abnormality that might So there. Uh, so under the supervision of Dr. Lind and Dr. Palmero, we'll be, we will be performing the drug screening and policy. Then we have copies will collect samples from the parents. The previous, uh, previous clinical history, all of all of which can be scheduled uh, on their on other times, specifically during this time, uh, uh, during the time of the major emotion by young parents. So uh, we can schedule the other. After that, uh, the samples will be taken care of, either stored at pH or for melanized samples will be uh, will be taken in UPCM. And then um, it will be then processed to PGC. After that, together with Dr. Lin, we will read the microscopic lines and formulate the report. So we know that during the uh, the decedent might still be in our study since uh, we need a negative autopsy. Um, uh, the histologic samples should not point out into a cause of death. So during this time, pwede pa siyang exclude Then after that, um, once our, our report the PD uh, analysis from PGC once it is stable. After that, I will refer the uh, subjects meaning parents of the occupant to screening and they can do the testing counseling. Thank you, Dr. Sandy, for the recruitment workflow for the uh, Philippine government program arm. So let's start with the last arm. The Philippine government program to be presented with the project development officer of the said arm. 
Dr. Maria Lourdes Francisco, please give her a round of applause. Thank you, Dr. Francisco, for the incredible effort this time. So, basically, ito yung um, what we will do to be involved in the society. At the end of the day, should be in the city. So, those on third brigades in blue, either symptomatic or asymptomatic, um, also the disease brigade cases can also be um, included in the study. So, we will be um, annotation three. So, we need index states, government notations in both states. So, sample size is 80 or 27 sets of videos. But more importantly, uh, we would like to emphasize the study of the So, again, age is important, 19 to 60 years old. Both parents must be alive since we're enrolling them in videos. And again, confirm, actually, they could be confirmed with the symptom with the Bugatti type of this pattern. Or, you can also refer to us, suspected Bugatti syndrome. So, kahit pa lang siya ng work up, um, we can refer them to the study team already. So, we can send for a work up. So, pwede rin yung study team na yung mag-work up yung sa patient to confirm if the patient is really a Bugatti syndrome condition. So, the symptoms as discussed in by Dr. Giselle, either as well as the dead parts, seven part of death, single pain, or single person labor. So, um, main criteria um, uh, the exclusion criteria, of course, if there's a lot of evaluation, insufficient for data, no consent, um, the parents should not be enrolled, or the symptoms is suggested by um, established by a different system. So, um, the excluded then should be studied, and if there are insufficient any samples later on. So, again, yeah. referrals can be forced to the clergy site to see the project of the earth. Oh, um, Dr. Francisco, the project development officer of the Together Project Fund, um, through the following contact details. Um, you can also message your Facebook page, the yeah, Philippine Law Program um, Facebook page. So, um, we will also respond to the, um, the Facebook Messenger. Um, with um patients would be um once there's a patient potential patient for the parents of the study, we can meet them through Zoom or personally whichever is more um, convenient for both parties to assess the clinical data and eligibility of the patient um for enrollment to the study. But also of course our education for the study. So again, the Brigada Type 1 is psychiatric or in this case must have the Brigada Type 1 is psychiatric. In two cases of five ml at the tubes and the total of 10 ml, this will be collected using the recovery procedure and this will be, we'll have a total of six tubes. Okay. okay. We will have a total of six tubes for one for the index patient and both for the so both for the uh, parents of the index patient, a total of six entities per index patient. Then a SOP will be followed for set of readings procedure. Then all specimens in laboratory waste will be disposed properly. And the true labeling instruction is there will be a patient code. It will be discussed later on, age, sex, birthday, and extraction. Now for both disease, Bangunit arm and Brugada arm index patient, we need again two ml of two pieces of five ml at the tubes. If it's feasible, then we need also the sample tissue sample that will be collected by the assigned personnel and will be coordinated by Dr. Sandy. And for specimen transport, well, we need to have keep it transported in for the cell shoes until the DNA extraction. So let's
So the extracted DNA will be coded and stored and analyzed at PGC, our Philippine Genome Center, and will be kept at negative 20 degrees Celsius to negative 80. Blood and tissue samples will be stored in PGC, UPPGH, molecular lab, and PGH by bank for 10 years. This will also be asked for the concept for the patient one. Now, then for the transport instructions, if the samples came from a different region or state, we need the samples must be picked up by designated study personnel and sent out within seven days from the extraction date to the PGC in an ice bath with temperature of our degrees Celsius. Now for specimen integrity and confidentiality, all records and personnel. Personal information will be kept confidential, and there will be identifier, which is coding of samples, and it will be secured in locked areas. However, if the results of the study may be presented at scientific or medical meetings, there will be no mention of the participants. Now, for the coding of samples, well, this is the example. So, MA, BAN for Bangumon, PRS for Rugada symptomatic. We are A for Brugada asymptomatic, which is less than 20%, must be less than 20% of the Brugada R participants. And we are B is disease Brugada. The year will be indicated also and the number or patient code number based on the index case. So we also have the letter code. A stands for index, B for quarter, C for modern. So one example of set of trio is BRS 223-001-A, then BRS 23-001-B for father, and so on for other C for mother. So that's it for So good morning, I'm Dr. Maria Marazon Pilimo Onahan. I'm the Science Research Specialist of the Philippine Download Program. So in a half, in addition to Mark uh, Mariel's uh, presentation, um, for the sample collection, we will also try to coordinate with the local laboratory um, um, in case um, the study team cannot uh, immediately go to the location of the subjects. Then for the informed consent, we also have um, a separate um, informed consent for genetic testing and um, biobank. So we are now open up for questions. For 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 um, yes, so if um, if for Brigada patients, I am symptomatic or symptomatic. Um, if they're confirmed already, you know, with the um, scenario was the patient already has a brigade type of disease um, they can be immediately referred to the they can be immediately referred to the uh, study team. Um, for so we evaluate patients already if the patient they are um, to assess their clinical um, information, um, clinical criteria, or paramedic is going to be a case report forms. Um, para nandun yung uh, medical history ng patient, just to um, para i-complete yung history, uh, clinical data of the patient. Then, upon evaluation, I think Dr. Giselle is the final say, no? Kung is, is i-include talaga siya dun sa study. Tapos, pero, oh, sorry. I think one of the Yes, follow. So, ang kailangan namin do is if confirmed, the radio CG. So, um, 
this just um, regarding the type 1 ECG pattern, the cup of the ECG, they can refer them to us po, na per day, na through the following contact details po. So, ito yung great times. We can set up if ever, kunyari merong patient sa ER. Um, kasi pwede naman, is, if hindi naman din emergency patient, no, pwede naman siya i-set up ng Zoom meeting or pwede po natin siya i-set up if ever yung face to face kung kaya naman po namin puntahan. So, ito po yung mainly lang na kailangan namin from year end, from the, uh, the residents or the ER po. No? Para checklist lang na kailangan patient is 19 to 60 years old. Both of the parents um, of the index patient, index patient should be alive. Then yung that either confirmed or suspected. So kahit sa clinics or sa outpatient department, patient is suspected lang na brugada, parang resuscitated, resuscitated siya ng sudden cardiac death from the ER, nagpa-follow up lang, kasi nga nag-work up. No, so, pwede rin yung i-refer na sa study team. Then, or yung mga syncopy or presyncopy na unexplained, maybe, no? So, yun yung pwede pa, pa, na, pwede pa natin i-work on na baka bangga na syncopation sila. Um, pero wait lang, if naman each na mention nito, na meron na siyang brigada type ng CCC pattern na confirmed na. So, we just set up, need to set up na tayo ni so you can contact us through the following contact. So I'm like we didn't have that they have the uh they have the time to to evaluate the patients. Uh sa akin po is once the giving the patient and and uh upon assessment mga talaga siyang bangood, you can call me right away. Then um after you're calling me, I will Doctor said, "Yung ang pinaka critical po is usually yung the the autopsy consent. So there, um, dun po namin, dun po kami mag um uh, kukuha ng verbal consent at least, so that before going here, um, medyo nakakaintindihan na kami na that the autopsy will be done. Um, uh, if ever po, ang napag-usapan namin ni Dr. Lip is that the uh, autopsy might be done in the funeral corridor. In the, um, I think there's a residency program in St. Louis Wada, na may pathology residency program. Uh, there are uh, BGH, no? BGH. BGH then, sorry there. Uh, pwede, pwede po kami pumunta doon to do the autopsy. Uh, pwede rin po sa, actually doon sa morgue ng hospital if no choice talaga kasi on our experience, the more that we transport the body, uh, mas, mas lalong umaatras yung consent ng uh, isang ng family. And the more na pinapatagal nyo yung time ng autopsy dun, na nakausap po sila, mas lalo sila umaatras. So by the time na um, matong, ano, matong bangungot uh, patient, just call us right away. We will uh, after pre screening, then we will confirm the screening, then we will talk. We will take it from there. So I guess there's no any other questions, but okay. So formally end this program, let us call science research specialist of the Philippine Bagmono program, Dr. Marie Farasanti and Dina Onaha. A round of applause, please. Once again, good morning. Um, and so we would like to thank um, the group, especially led by Dr. Dave Padilla, for coming today and welcoming our group here in Radio for the launch of the Philippine Bangalore program. We also would like to acknowledge um, the help of Guest Pharma for sponsoring today's um, event. Thank you also again to our consultants, um, the residents, and the uh, interns who um, attended this orientation. Again, we are counting on your support by referring um, possible cases of Bangun and Brugada syndrome to our 
um, study team to uh, so that we can shed uh, shed light and help um, the patients suffering from these conditions. So the contact details through which you can um, reach us for coordination or referral uh, are again um, flashed on the screen. So we yeah, are. We thank you once again for coming, um, and we wish you a good day ahead. Thank you.